Hi, this is just a video walkthrough of some of the work we're doing at Redfish, uh, collaborating with Santa Fe Institute. And here's John Miller of Santa Fe Institute flying his Phantom 3 drone uh, over the campus. And we're working with uh, Dr. Louis Spentoncourt, uh, looking at can we recover building height from photogrammetry and LIDAR or cell phones, uh, different, different methods of recovering uh, building heights. And so here you can see uh, the beginning of, here's John's uh, drone flyover using the embedded camera. Uh, this is at 60 frames a second. What we're gonna do is peel off, uh, all we need is really one frame a second, uh, approximately, doing a structure from motion. So as these pixels are moving here, we're using um, software to basically recover a 3D point cloud from this data. Pretty, uh, pretty impressed with how smooth the platform is as far as uh, stable rotor as well as a uh, camera as this drone is hovering. Winds weren't too strong uh, that day. Uh, so you can see the truck down there and moving here. So basically we're gonna take um, this, uh, this imagery. Uh, we're using a photo scan uh, by Agisoft here as a, uh, a first pass and bringing in the images. Uh, once we have the images loaded, we're going to find, uh, the software's going to find tie points uh, that are points of correspondence uh, between those points. Uh, once I have those tie points, I'm also putting in markers in here that have geo-coordinates that helps me uh, geo-rectify uh, the model. Uh, from that, we can uh, get a, a more dense uh, fill-in of the point cloud, and from that, uh, make a mesh. Uh, which looks like this, and then here's the final texture mapping of that mesh uh, laid in here. And again, that is all coming from, notice how we're getting pretty decent, uh, the umbrellas uh, in there, and even the, uh, uh, the back of the buildings, and we got some, uh, the truck over here and things like that. Um, and now from this, uh, we can also infer the position of the cameras, uh, both the uh, six degrees of freedom for a camera, three for position, three for rotation, and then the intrinsic uh, parameters of a camera uh, specifying kind of the center of its focus as well as some of the distortion. So from this, we're able to uh, geo-rectify uh, that model. And now we're here we are in Google Earth, uh, looking south, now looking north at uh, the SFI campus here. And we'll bring in our uh, KML model uh, output from that software and check out the, the registration onto Google Earth. And so this 3D model is from, from the drone. And you can see the building as well as uh, the truck, kind of pretty cool here. And so this can be output in different uh, formats for 3D printing or, you know, for our case, for using it for measurement uh, for surface area to volume relationships. And uh, other examples here, we'll bring it onto the web here. Um, we're gonna load uh, the point cloud into, the, into our browser that we can kind of move around in here. And that's uh, running real time. And we could do things like uh, measurement now, say, you know, what, what, how wide is uh, this area in meters or kind of the height, uh, measure things like angle as we come down here, what's that angle here? So you can see that uh, advantage. And our next uh, effort is now comparing that to ground-based photography or using a 24-foot pole where we took some photography where if you don't have a drone. And then uh, can we do it, in, the next question is, can we do it in real time with, um, so having a real-time point cloud, so capturing the animation as well. So uh, here's another point cloud from that same day. This is a fantastic view. That's me uh, taken by Cody. So that's a, the same point cloud from that day, uh, just using uh, a camera. All right, thank you. That's, uh, that's it. And thanks to John Miller for the use of the drone.